Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today, we got a service call on a 9620RX. The customer said that it started leaking oil out of the output shaft, and it's leaking oil like Niagara Falls out the output shaft. He sent me a video of it, and it's just pouring out of that output shaft. So I got a seal and the special tool to install the seal, and hopefully that's all it is, but this tractor is new like the paint is barely dry on this thing so not really sure what we're going to get into here but let's take a look Oh, that's a good sign. Man, oh man. Yeah, it looks like it's just coming straight out of that output shaft. Great. Yeah, I started it up so I could turn it just a little bit so I can get in here a little better. And man. She's leaking pretty good. All right, we're gonna remove these U-joint bolts. I'll pry these U-joints off. Went ahead and took the shaft completely off. sweetheart uh oh ooh look at that seal that ain't cool why'd I do that okay I've got updates that's what I pulled out of there. And you see, there is no longer a bearing in here. You can see the outer, the race of the bearing right there, and that's the inner race. She has no more bearing. Great. So the game plan is is i'm going to have to try to take this park brake off and try to figure out what i can fix to get another bearing and seal on this tractor so we can try to get this thing loaded up on a trailer because most likely there's probably internal uh, transmission damage i mean we've we ran it without a, a bearing on the output shaft so um, likely there's going to be you know bearing material possibly broken teeth in the bottom of this transmission so i will drain the sump and try to get it out as much metal as possible but if i can get the park brake back together with a new bearing on that output shaft and a new seal i'll be able to pull this thing on a trailer just so we can get it back to the shop so that's the game plan hope it works all right so i took the filters off so this can come out and this thing is under spring pressure so we gotta take the bolts out evenly as we come out this way. And I installed dowels in two holes so this thing ain't gonna fall down. So I just gotta get these bolts loosened up. Okay, I got the housing off. And that is what's left of the bearing. Now I gotta pull the bevel springs out. See if I can't. I don't know if I can get that out. I can get some magnets. 
Okay, I got the springs out of there. And this here is the piston. See this, this part brake is spring applied and hydraulically released. So it uses these, this piston to release those bevel springs. Because when those bevel springs push down, it pushes down on the, the clutch disc, which lock it to the output shaft, which puts it into park. So we're gonna try to pull some metal out of here. Now I'm just gonna try to pull out as much metal as I can on this transmission. Hopefully we can get a new bearing. So here's the, the inner race of that bearing. Hopefully we can get this off and get a new one on, get this back together so we can get it back to the shop. So I'm gonna loosen this sump cover. We can drain this transmission down so I can get the sump screen out. as I thought it was going to be. Now we need to go fishing. Well, I got the sump screen out and I went fishing and I caught a bunch of metal fish and flakes. So that's what the bottom of the transmission looks like right now. All right, we're back with parts and I got this puller on here and we're going to get this inner race off. She is. Boy, that sucker was tight. See, these bearings are heated to 300 degrees and then slid onto that shaft and then they cool into place. So we still got to get a bearing onto there. And I don't have a, a bearing cooker with me out here in the field. So this might get interesting. We're gonna have to get creative, I think. All right. So we got the bevel springs in there and my dowels installed. Now, I know this isn't ideal and this is just temporary. We're just trying to temporarily put this back together so we can run with an output shaft bearing and we can get that parking brake housing back on so we have a proper seal so we're not just pouring oil out everywhere. Normally you would put this bearing in a bearing cooker with oil and you would heat it up to 300 degrees and then you would take it and you would just slide it on the shaft and it would slide right on there no problem and then you just let it go and then it cools and then it's locked into place once it's cooled. Well I'm like an hour away from the shop and I don't have a bearing cooker with me so I'm thinking if I can just use some map gas to heat the inner race of this bearing and I'll temp it with my temp gun and try to get it up to 300 degrees, try to shove it on and get it started, and then take that housing and shove that housing on and then run the bolts down and then it should press it on the rest of the ways. Kind of what I'm thinking. Bam. Give her a couple of 
couple taps to make sure she's on good. Now in a perfect world, we'd go one turn on each numbered bolt in, in sequence, but we don't have time for that. So we're just gonna go as even as we can all the way around. I'm just going to loosen these one at a time and retorque. room in here for activities. Okay, now they're properly torqued. I just wanted to hammer that thing down real quick while that bearing was hot, so I made sure it was seated on the shaft. I didn't have time to do one revolution with a ratchet, so I just used an impact and just lightly went around each one to get it on as evenly as possible. And then I just backed it off and then retorqued them. Now I'm gonna get these filter screwed on here real quick while well, this shaft isn't in my way have a half inch square drive on the bottom. I can get it lined up.
All right, now we can get this yoke on. What I want to try to do is try to time it up the best I can to where I can get that shaft on there. Because now that we got that in there, that shaft ain't going to move. Because it needs a little persuasion. When threading in there, I thought it might be the wrong size. Now this shaft's really heavy. That's why I put those dowels on there. Help align it. The shaft probably weighs almost 90 pounds. Right amount. That's how you do it when you only got one person. And it's hard to hold a 90 pound shaft with one hand and start bolts with the other. It's not ideal.
See that shaft just wants to telescope back out. Hang on. Difficult. sure about this side yet. I can't see it. Tap that side in. Okay, so I got the transmission pre-filled up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start it. I need to straighten out the tractor so I can actually dump buckets into the hydraulic reservoir on the other side. But the reservoir is plenty full, so it should suck it down some. Let's fire this puppy up. got it running I don't have any leaks off the output shaft now we're gonna see if she's gonna move I had to unhook the chisel so here we start in low gear I don't hear anything bad happening the aftermath. That's going to do it for today's video. Um, we're going to go ahead and tomorrow a uh, semi-trailer is going to come up here and we're going to get this tractor loaded up on a trailer and take it back to the shop. Thanks for watching guys. Keep that green iron moving.